Okay, welcome back everyone. So on this set of videos, we're gonna start covering the topic of Laplace transforms. And basically Laplace transform is one of those methods that we can use um, to make our problems easier. And in this case, we want to learn how to use Laplace so we can solve ODEs. And as you can see on the screen, we have many different ways in which we can use Laplace transform to solve for our uh, whatever problem we have. So let's go first, look at what a Laplace transform is, and then we'll learn how we can solve it, what it is, and how it can be used and applied. So the Laplace transform is used to solve linear differential equations. Um, they can transform what will be a calculus problem or a differential equation problem into an algebra problem. So if we have a problem that has to do with calculus or an ODE, we can apply a Laplace transform, and then those terms that will be in uh, will be functions of t will then change to be a function of something else, and we'll make our problem being a calculus to something where we can just apply algebra to solve it. So once again, you can see it can convert from the t domain, or a function of t, to the s domain, where we're doing a function of s. So we're changing from one domain to the other. Um, Laplace has many applications in the real world, such as uh, it can be used for analyzing electronic circuits, control systems, etc. And once you take the system dynamics class, you'll see that Laplace transform is really useful whenever you want to see and do analysis of mechanical system, electrical systems, hydraulic systems, and so on. So it is a, a really useful tool. You will see as we move along with this video, uh, and that it is something really useful and really great that we can use for a wide variety of applications. And also you can see here on the right that there is a table for transforms. So the good thing about the Laplace transform is that the main way to do it is that whatever your function of T is, uh, there is already a corresponding uh, transform. So if you take the Laplace transform of for example one, the corresponding transform in the s domain will be one over s, and if you have the corresponding the the you take the Laplace of some exponential, you can see that it will be one over s minus whatever, um, the power of the exponential is. So it is really, um, uh, easy to do, and one of the properties that this one has the Laplace transform, uh, it has the linearity property, or the linearity theorem. Uh, which basically states that if you're taking the Laplace transform of two functions, uh, it's the same thing as if you're taking the individual Laplace transform for each function, and any constants in the function can be taken out, any coefficients can be taken out, treated as constants, and then you only focus on the function itself, and then it, we can multiply the constants after. So let's solve a couple examples, and hopefully these will start making more sense. So... We have here that we need to find the Laplace transform of this expression. We have 6e to the 4t plus 8t plus 9. So to do that, basically we, uh, first step, we use the linearity property. So you can see we take the Laplace. You can see the Laplace is represented by this uh, kind of cursive L. And then everything in parentheses, which is our main expression. So according to the linearity property, if we take the Laplace of this whole expression, it's the same thing as if we're taking the Laplace of every single one of these terms. You can see we have the Laplace of 6e to the 4t plus the Laplace of 8t plus the Laplace of 9. Um, you can see also that our other step will be to factor out the coefficients from the functions themselves. So here we're factoring out the 6 uh, from the, and then we have the Laplace of e to the 4t plus 8 times the Laplace of t plus nine to the plus of one. Uh, our next step would simply just be looking at the table for the corresponding transform. So usually there's already a table given for you. You can find them online. In this case, you guys can have, should have them in your book, um, a table for transforms. So uh, if you're dealing with a plus, or most unlikely you already have a table available for you. If not, you can look one online or any book that you're using and just look whatever function you're working with and look for whatever it's corresponding transform. You can see where there's not really much math involved here. It's a matter of just reading. So make sure that you select whichever is the appropriate one. So looking at the table, we see that the Laplace 
uh, transform for the e to the 4t as the following. So we have e to the at, and the Laplace transform is 1 or s minus a, where we can see here that for this one, a or that uh, power, it's equals to 4. And therefore, uh, we also have the 1 for the t. And you can see that the plus of, of t to n power, it's n factorial over s to the n plus 1. In this case, t is to the power of 1. So that n is 1. And then we have the plus of, of 1. You can see if we factor out the 9. So it's factor out 9. You can see it's 9 times 1, the same thing. Um, and then we have the simply the Laplace of 1 is just 1 over s. I didn't write it here, but you can see it, it's still there. So now we just need to write the Laplace transform. So we still have here the you know, the 6 outside, all the coefficients, and now the corresponding transforms. Um, you can see the pressure forward. And after we write the Laplace transform, now we can simply you know, distribute that those coefficients. And this in red, it will be our uh, our solution for this one. You can see we have 6 over s minus 4 plus 8 over s squared plus 9 over s. So let's do more examples so this can be easier to do. So the next one that we have is uh, 9e to negative t plus t squared plus 5 cosine of 3t plus 5 sine of 3t. So we have quite an expression here. Once again, we got to take the Laplace. And according to the linear property, uh, we taking the Laplace of everything, it's the same thing as taking the Laplace of each individual term. So you have the Laplace of 9, e to negative t, plus the Laplace of t squared, plus the Laplace of 5 cosine of 3t, plus the Laplace of 5 sine of 3t. So, uh, Doing that, we can factor out, you know, the the coefficients, and we are only focused on the functions. And our next step will be to look at the table and see what is the Laplace of each one of these functions. So for e to the negative t, once again, we have the same one here, e to the at, where in this case a, uh, it's equal to negative one. We have the Laplace of t t squared, where n in this case will be two. So we will have 2 factorial over s cube. The next one will be the cosine of 3t. And you can see that for cosine, uh, the one that we have here, it's cosine omega t. So omega in this case will be 3. And then for sine, it's pretty similar. But notice that instead of being s over s squared plus omega squared, we have omega over s squared plus omega squared. So they're pretty similar, but do not confuse them. Cosine has an S on the top, sine has an omega on the top, which in this case, omega is just a number. So once again, we have here for the first one, we write the Laplace, so whatever we found, you can see that for the first term, e to negative t, because a is negative one, they're gonna basically negative times negative will make it positive. For t squared, n is two, we have two factorial over s to the two plus one. In the cosine, we have s over s squared plus 3 squared. And in the sine, we have 3 over s squared plus 3 squared. So simplifying a little bit, we're going to get 9 times 1 over s plus 1 two plus 2 over x cubed plus 5 times s over s squared plus 9 plus 5 times 3 over s squared plus 9. And then when we simplify everything, we distribute the coefficients back inside, we're going to get the following, 9 over s plus 1 plus 2 over x cubed plus 5s over s squared plus 9 plus 15s squared plus 9. And this is how the Laplace transform works. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's nothing too complicated. It is a pretty simple process to follow. So let's, let's look at our last example for the Laplace transform. So you can see this time we have 7 cosine of at plus seven hyperbolic cosine of eight t. So I suggest you take, you pause the video right here, take a couple seconds, write it down, you know, take about a minute or so, solve it yourself, and let's see if, uh, if you get it correct. So you can do that right now. Okay, so if you already solved it, let's, let's do it together. So once again, take the Laplace of everything, and because of the linearity property or linearity theorem, 
it means that we can take the Laplace of each one individually. We can factor out those coefficients. And now we only have to look for the Laplace transform of cosine of AT and hyperbolic cosine of AT, which once again for the cosine is S over S squared plus omega squared. And for the hyperbolic cosine, you can see it's pretty similar, but it, in this case, it's S over S squared minus A squared, which A squared, omega squared will do the same, just the only thing that will be changing will be that sign in the bottom into the plus will be a minus. So we write, in this case, omega, it's eight, and A is also eight. We write down the Laplace transforms for each one of those. And basically we simplify and then we distribute that seven. And this is what we get our final answer. Seven S over S squared plus 64 plus seven S over S squared minus 64. So you can see this is how you find the Laplace transform of the functions. Uh, later on in different videos, we're gonna see how we can do um, going backwards, basically taking the Laplace inverse, where we're going from the S domain back to the T domain, and we'll see how we can apply these things that we're, as we're learning, as we're going, applying into our main um, purpose, which is to solve, you know, uh, differential equations. So I'll see you back in the next video, where we're going to basically covering the inverse Laplace transform. Good luck. Mm -hmm.